Hi guys, this is might be a little bit interesting. I don't know. I'm recording at this point, not knowing the wind up of it. What we have is Cardinal Scant Hill. One of my colleagues is working on it now that works here. What we have here is a P1180 fuel filter heater open circuit. It's a Saab 93, no eight. 2008 Saab 93 and what he has identified so far and this is only going given a walk through from what and where he stands okay we have a water and fuel sensor here on the bottom of the fuel filter on the top then we have a fuel temperature sensor and then here on the right hand side you can see the wires being that bit bigger they that is the the fuel heater okay sitting in here so far what he has pointed out or at least explained to me is the black wire is a ground the brown and gray one which is on the right hand side on the camera there now is the actual power feed the ground is good and intact when he back probes the power feed side with the ignition on he has a ground there as well kind of signifying that the element inside in the sensor is good but he has taken it off and he has done a resistance check the wires or the block connector off done a resistance check on the actual element itself and the heating element is intact okay then he's got out i probably should have maybe potentially set myself up a little bit better for this he has diagrams of locations he has out. here i see where we have the fuse for it and where the relay for it is so heater relay fuel heater fuse we have fuse we had none in there put one in there but even when he takes it out with the relay out he has two powers coming to it one is going to be for the load side and one is going to be for the control side we'll go up and in sit in here battery is on charge there at this point in time as well sorry right looking at our little diagram on the side of it 87a which is in the middle is not being used okay pin 86 which is here and pin 30 which is here are both live with the ignition on okay 87 then is the load side of the relay which is sending power or would should be sending power back down all the way down to our fuel heater inside it and then 85 is the control side of our little relay okay now the fuses f8 was where there was no fuse he put one in there but whether it's in or out we still had our two powers coming here as i said one is going to be load one is going to be on the control side circuit so the fuse the information we have on that is wrong whether it's from f8 stating it's for the heater really but it's not whatever is, is kind of going wrong on the pictures or diagrams what we do know if i go in here with a oh where did i go did he go with, yeah, no, sorry. When we go in here, <clears throat> we have a ground in here with our heating element, our heating element, yeah, connected back here. So once it's connected on this wire, we have, on number 87, we have a ground. When we disconnect the heating element back here, our ground here goes miss missing. What that is doing is proving that the wire from here back to the element through the windings of the element and out to the black wire, which is the ground, is intact. So, the only wire we have a doubt on now is number 85, the control wire, which is coming from the engine ECU. I don't know where at this point the engine ECU is. I don't know where at this point, I'm gonna put it back together, where the wire is coming from or going to, but just because 
It's a wiring issue and maybe a little bit hard to find. I'm actually going to record at this point and see what he comes up with and see if he finds a wire broken somewhere. Might be nice to see. Could be something a bit interesting in it, huh? Maybe someone might find it again, but I'll let you know when he finds more, okay? If you understood that explanation of where we're at, but I'll talk to you in a couple of seconds and let you see what I find or he finds. Okay, guys, I'm jumping into this thing. Um, at this point in time, there's a fall coat. E1180. And I'm back out of that. Airpods. Continue. Codes. Still here, okay? So we had a hard fault of some sort on that, so we're going to go hunting down. Cars running there and continuing for, from where the last bit of the video shows, okay? Fuel filter heater on this thing. The wire that we had question marked was 85. Okay, well, not the wire, the actual contact pin that had question marked was 85. That wire then is, let's see here, is blue and green. It's running down across. Down and into the engine ECU. Lock connector B, pin number 68. Okay, show you where we're at then. Yeah, probably. We have back probed, we're just kind of doing a bypass here into on pin 85, and then a jumper cable heading over. And this down the loom into the engine ECU, it lives underneath the wheel arch on the passenger side. We're back probing that blue and green wire on pin number 68 okay so now we're just bypassing the case of the broken wire and what we've done we've cleared fault codes there just a second ago and just see I'm also just going in with the, with the multimeter and we've 10 volts there at this point in time and uh, just to see what we're getting through this wire from the jumper cable and checking and seeing is clean clearing fault codes at this point in time just to make sure that they, they don't come back out. As I said, there was a hard fault, so it wouldn't go away. Okay guys, passed up my fuse box. First thing I done was checked continuity between pin number 85 that's sitting in there, and then on the back of the actual box, sorry, right, on the back of the box, it's the second row in, maybe I should be pointing with something better. Second row in that pin there, which is pin number 23 on block connector. Pin number 23 on block connector B. Didn't know which block connector was what, but when I looked on here, pin number 23, oh, again, sorry, pin number 23 on that one was a big, huge block connector, so I ignored that. This one didn't have 23 pins. This one had 23, so we said that one, as I said, then it came in. Look at block connector B here. I actually marked it with yellow. And what I done is I went in and looked and lo and behold, that wire, if you can see it, in here is, you can't really see it, can you? Is green and blue. The color is hard to identify at that point. You can see the green, but you can't see the actual Blue on it too much there, okay. Right, loom was heading down and out of the way, hard to get in at, so didn't really like it. But I was doing a continuity check from here to to here, laying the pin in on it very nicely, and then I could back probe in here. I can't even see into it there now. Yeah, it was actually in here. Look, you can see her in there at the sorry, the top of my finger, the blue and green. We're just there, okay, so we're back probing here. Head it up, it's not nice. I'll put some electrical tape on it there in a second. The liquid tape, the pin here, we had continuity, green. And if you can see it, that's just blue. So ignore that one, the green and blue one is this one. That's here on the front of my finger, the lightest body, a bad job on my head. We had continuity here. Head it up, again, back in here. We had two of them, but, the light is actually a bad job. 
the, the wire is actually sitting in here. And I marked it with yellow paint so I wouldn't be losing it because we had another blue and green one which was here and I didn't want to get confused. So I had no, I had no, con I had no continuity from over here to here, from the, the, the fuse box, I'm sorry, from the fuse box to the ECU. But then what I was doing was I kept swapping. So I went from here, followed the wire as much as I could in around and pulled the loom apart, actually. Put the light off mine. But pulled the loom apart down there. Found the actual same color wire, which you can see right there. Found the same color wire, which is sitting, again, you can't do, see the color, but it's sitting there. But I had continuity from here to up here. So I had eliminated the wire that was going from point A to point B was getting smaller. Here to here was good. And then I knew that here to here was good. So then all of a sudden it did, it started getting smaller. We went in another little bit back probed and we could, we were starting to find issues, but we have the problem found just down here on the back of the time belt. There is an actual plastic connector holding this thing on. And this, I'd like you to see this more than not see it. Okay, the wire is actually, the wire is actually this baby here. Now, I love it. If we can catch this on camera to show you. Okay, the loom comes around, quite small, block connector being good, and I know you can't, now you can start to see it. Green crusties. And him. See yeah. it? Gone. I'm totally gone with your toggle. Off she goes. Alright. So because of where it was held with a little clamp, it was vibrating. Looked actually really, really good in there, but this was what was after causing the problem. Also, trying to do what Bernie Thompson would be saying. Um, think like the engine EC, what was happening was we had the 12 volts coming to the relay through the windings of the control side of the relay and then that was 12 volts was getting out and down that wire that broke it and down as far as the engine ECU. So the engine ECU could see the 12 volts key on engine off. And when it wasn't seeing the 12 volts, that was what was triggering the fault code. P1180, um, again, I'll, I'll post it like I'm not, I'm not on the ball now, but could be wrong. but. Yeah, that's it. Hunting down a broken wire. Fuel heater. I'm not actually in today. I only came in to find this for a few minutes. An hour, whatever it was. Um, so I'm not going to show you the fix, but what the lad that's working on it will solder in a wire. Always go a good bit at each side of the cables and solder them up and fault codes will be resolved. That is it. Problem found, problem fixed, and I'll talk to you in the next cartoon. Please like and subscribe, guys, if it's a good thing. Thanks, lads. Talk soon.